ID confusion for trans Albertans in light of Bill 6? What will ultimately determine the fate of Keystone XL? Motivated by more than money. From one guitar maker, all by himself, in a little shop. He just really does amazing work. And is the right beginning to reunite in Alberta politics? Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Alberta Primetime. I'm Shauna Randolph. And I'm Michael Higgins. Despite the recent U.S. Senate vote against approving the Keystone XL pipeline, there is still optimism among proponents here in Alberta. Premier Jim Prentice plans to visit Washington in the new year when the pro-pipeline Republicans are expected to officially take control of the Senate. The fate of Keystone XL and the impact on our province, that's coming up. But first, are trans Albertans falling through legal gaps? That's where Alberta Primetime begins tonight. The Alberta government amended legislation last spring that allowed trans Albertans to legally change their gender on their birth certificates without requiring them to undergo a gender reassignment surgery. It was a decision welcomed by many, but now some trans Albertans are surprised that recent amendments to Bill 6 did not include changes to the Traffic Safety Act, which would also allow gender changes to be made on driver's licenses and provincial IDs. What challenges do these inconsistent laws pose? And what needs to happen to ensure the government addresses all trans ID issues? And joining me tonight for this conversation is Stephanie Shostak, board member of TESA, the Trans Equality Society of Alberta. Thank you. Welcome to our studios. Thank you, Shana. Let's start with your concerns about Bill 6 and, and really what you're concerned about. Sure. Well, when the provincial government brought in amendments to the Statues Amendment Act, in the spring, it allowed trans Albertans to change the gender marker on their birth certificate. So right, it was good news. It was very good news. It, that allowed uh, trans Albertans to take the birth certificate, go get a valid Canadian passport, which could either be a five or ten year passport, instead of a two year, which was the only other alternative in the past, because the federal government only allowed a two year passport for trans, Al trans Canadians because it was a temporary measure. With the amended passport, you can now, sorry, sorry, with the amended birth certificate, you can now go and get a full five or 10 year passport. Mm -hmm. And you could also get a Nexus Global Entry Card if you're doing a lot of traveling through Canada to the US or Mexico. We were really disappointed with the, with the legislation that came in last Tuesday under the Statutes Amendment Act number two, 2014, when it brought in some pieces of legislation, but it didn't bring in the Traffic Safety Act. And the Traffic Safety Act wording was almost identical to what was in the Vital Stats legislation, which was amended last spring. So that basically meant trans Albertans could go and get an amended driver's license or provincial ID card. However, they had to show proof from a psychologist or psychiatrist that they were actually transgender and were going through their transition. The issue that comes up now is once your driver's license expires, the way the Traffic Safety Act is written, they are unable to get that driver's license or provincial ID card renewed without going through the same process again, even though they may have an amended birth certificate. So there is inconsistencies between both legislations. And it can be difficult to get that documentation as well, is it? It can be because you have to go in, have an appointment with your psychologist or psychiatrist or your general practitioner, get all the paperwork done, and it would be very repetitive every so many years, so if it's five years or whatever the stipulation is on your driver's license. Do you feel that it would have been a simple change? Uh, very much so, because the wording that they put into place through the amendments to the Vital Statistics Act could have been used in the tra uh, Traffic Safety Act. Okay, which is why you were so surprised about it. That's correct. So when we saw... Uh, this latest piece of legislation come in, it had five or six pieces of legislation, but the Traffic Safety Act was missing. Okay, I understand you met with a former Human Services Associate Minister last May discussing the Vital Statistics Act, very optimistic after that. Going forward now with this, how does your organization continue then to, to work alongside the government? Well, we're, TESA overall looks out for the issues that surround trans Albertans and 
were there to work with the government to make these positive changes. We were very happy that they amended the Vital Statistics Act. We'd be very happy if they amended the Traffic Safety Act. Um, if there's any other legislation or any other policy decisions that may have to be changed or modified to allow trans Albertans to become fully functional citizens within the province of Alberta, that's what we would strive towards. Okay, are you optimistic now? What have you been hearing, if anything, from the government? You've been very vocal about this. We haven't heard too much yet. Um, we know that Bill 6 is in place already in the legislature. It's going through second reading. And typically when you have an enactment in place like that, they're going to debate the legislation and make some amendments to it. It's very rare to have the legislation come in and have a motion from the floor to introduce another piece of legislation so that it can be debated. So our best hope right now is that they would be able to bring changes to the Traffic Safety Act in the spring when they have the next session and that it'll be addressed at that time. Still months away though. It's months away, but it's better than not being addressed at all. Okay, and what do you think the chances are of that even going through? Well, I think there have been a lot of positive steps forward as we've seen um, Lori Blakeman's brought in a private, private member's bill uh, to help with um, gay straight alliances within schools and that in, also includes transgender individuals and this is just another piece of that legislation for those Albertans. And the PCs have been making it very clear it is a priority. It is a priority and we hope they'll continue to move forward. Well, thank you very much for sharing your insights on this tonight for our viewers. Thank you. That was Stephanie Shostak. She is board member of the Trans Equality Society of Alberta.